And welcome back for the 7 o'clock game. Here we have Lourdes and St. James. Both these teams are hungry for that fourth playoff spot. And this is a big matchup head-to-head -head as this might determine who makes the playoffs. There is a short kick. It'll be caught at the 45 and tackled. It's Owen Ellis to start off this game. We saw Lourdes last week. They didn't fare too well against Centennial. No, not a great. Pretty much from torched them. them all night. That was a rough one for them. Let's see if they can bounce back tonight against the Lions. So St. James, they won D10 last year with a fantastic team, really centered around uh, some of their skill positions. I mean, Tanner Nelms is one of the greater players on that team. Yeah, Tanner Nelms, who got plenty of scholarship offers. Same with Pal Samansky. They will not be a part of this team today but they were a huge reason why they made it on last year so far. Returning from this team, their starting quarterback, Jacob Thomas, is back here for St. James, and that's big. Here's a big piece of that offense. He's going to sling it right now, and he's got a man wide open. First play from scrimmage is a house call. Nick Bortolo with the catch, and that was just amazing right off the bat, and we saw this so many times last year right off the bat. Great job by Jacob Thomas and Nick Portola. We talk about Garvin. We talk about um, the Centennial quarterback. His name just slipped my mind right Danny now. Danny Brown. Yeah, Danny Brown. Jacob Thomas is up there as well as one of the top quarterbacks in D10. We just saw it. He gashed that Lourdes defense there. Yeah, we saw that all last year. Jacob Thomas throwing those balls deep. Great job by him to find his open man. And don't be surprised. These guys fake it a lot. They will decide to just put it through here. But yeah, last year we saw uh, an array of onside kicks. We saw fake punts. We saw fake PATs. They did some crazy stuff last year. And really, they pretty much just dusted through this D10 competition last year. Yep. They, um, and then I believe they won another game after that in their uh, quest for, I believe it was Kawasa or Offsa. I'm not sure, but I believe they went two games deep into the playoffs and lost in a nail-biter that we did cover here at Alumni Stadium. Yeah, that game was a snowstorm. Passing game wasn't really going. No. Either. There wasn't many points scored. Devastating way to end their season last year. Yeah, nevertheless, a good season from the Lions as they start this game off very well. We're going to start with a run here from Lourdes. That's going to pick up a good six or seven yards. That'll be Lucas Mamaliti on the carry. Mamaliti we saw last week. One of the only bright spots for this Lourdes team who did an all right job on the ground, just couldn't really get the offense consistently going good. Yeah, Mamalidi was fantastic. Also on defense, he was really getting it going too from those linebacker spot. Probably led the, Lehman ta led the team in tackles that game. So it's Jacob Porcelato here at quarterback. 
It'll be another run. Mamaliti is going to try to find a first down. He will fall over the 45-yard line, picking up a first for Lourdes. And that will move the chains. Last week they struggled. On first down, they were really good on the run. Then they decided, Then they passed the ball pretty much every second down, and it had no success. So I imagine them to lean heavily on their run game today. Yeah, Porcelato was picked off a few times as he will line up under center here on first and ten. That'll be a pitch on the fake to the fullback. It'll be Mamaliti getting over the 50 to midfield. Looks like he picked up that first down. We'll see where that spot is. Leave it's... It will be a first down. Yeah, so another notable name on their offense. They always had a split, split backfield of Mamaliti and Brennan Barber. Barber will not be playing today. Yeah, Barber out. He was pretty much a fullback back there. Did have a couple carries, but mostly lead block for Mamaliti. He will not be here today. So St. James, their defense was very good last year, but early on, Mamaliti's having his way with this defense as he picks up two first downs. And they'll give it right back to him. That run not as effective, only picking up three, four at the most. I believe that was Julian Rigo on the tackle there. Blew that play right up. That'll bring up second and eight as they will only give him two. Now on second down, we could see the first pass of the game. Well, first pass for Lourdes. Yeah, Porcelato hasn't really. Last game, he didn't have the greatest outing at quarterback. Not trusted to throw too much as this will be a swing pass. And we talked about the swing passes as they are very predictable. Last game in this game, we've already got St. James Lions jumping all over it. Yeah, last week we saw one successful swing pass. After that, they were pretty much blown up every single time. Yeah. They were very predictable to read. And that was the and first swing pass of the game that was only the only successful one. Other than that, their passing offense really only consisted of that and maybe an occasional screen, and those got blown up. They will punt here. And we will get to see that Lions offense that we only saw for one play. Yeah, and what a play it was. It went to the house, Josh Romero, to punt this one away. And let's see if St. James can turn a return back here. Missing some tackles. That's Jean Charbonneau, and he's got some room taken down at the 50-yard line. Nice tackle there by Josh Romero, the kicker. Makes the tackle there. Last man to beat, switched field there. Nice return there. Yeah, Gives the Lions some pretty good field position. Usually if it's your punter making the tackle, it's probably a nice little gain on that kick. But nice job by him to make that tackle for sure. So Jacob Thomas, after one play, one touchdown, will make his way back out here for the St. James offense. And he's going to look for the same receiver, same play. It'll be caught. No run after the catch. That's down to the 20. Nick Bertolo once again. And this offense is looking pretty dynamic. Not, a, not as nice as the last pass where Bertolo caught it in stride. This time, a little off the mark. Still finds his man, Bertolo. Exact same play it looked. Yeah, I mean, Lourdes is going to have to, maybe that's a mismatch going on. I, I'm not sure, but Bertolo is having his way with this defense so far. We'll have to keep an eye on him as he's had an explosive first two plays because that's all it's really been. This is the third Lions offensive play. Now looking to his left, rolling to his left. Thomas is very fast at quarterback. He's going to stop up. Now he's going to launch into the end man. zone. He had a man open. That'll fall incomplete. That was Ethan Barry. Yeah, Ethan Barry was open. Jacob Thomas, like you said, very quick. Gets out of the pocket. Quick stutter step. Plants his feet. Had Ethan Barry just off the mark. Yeah, just overthrew him. Made his defender fall with that quick starter step. Either way, it'll be second and 10. Haven't seen St. James put the ball on the ground yet. Yeah, and their run attack last year was so good. With Tanner Nelms, he's gone, but he was clearly the best back in the league last year. For sure. No one could really stop him. It'll be a split backfield now for Thomas. Thomas going to look to his left. That is Bertolo, and that is caught. And he is having a game already. Him and Thomas link up for two touchdowns. 
Portolo right off the bat. That's his second touchdown on his third catch. And there is a flag on the play. Yeah, though there's a flag. I mean, it looks like it is coming back. But, I mean, they've got to get somebody else on Bertolo. And All right, it so will the be a touchdown. touchdown will stand. But yeah, like I was saying, should they just maybe put two people on Bertolo, make sure to stop him somehow because he is just having his way. It's pretty much just one on one. Bertolo has burned the corner that's been on him. So early on, St. James has really been fantastic on offense. Lourdes really has no answer. They did have a nice offensive possession, but down 14, we've seen how hard it is to come back from that, no matter how much time you got. That kick is up and good. So Lourdes now on offense. The run game has been pretty good so far. That swing pass really kind of kill him on that last drive. Uh, in the air, do they do anything different? Yeah, they, well... See, the Lions haven't seen that swing pass before, but clearly they read it pretty easily. But really, I like the run attack on first down, especially if they can pick up eight or seven right off the bat and maybe just get their quarterback's confidence up. We said that last week. So uh, that penalty will be against Lourdes. They'll start at the 20 instead of the 35. And it will be a run. Mamaliti once again... And that is a gang of black shirts in on the tackle. I believe that was James Martin who made first contact there with Mamaliti. He'll pick up about three or four. I think I'm going to say three. Yep. Second and seven upcoming here for Lourdes. Most likely a passing play here. Yeah, and when we've seen Porcelato throw down field, he's kind of throw them, the ball's kind of hung up in the air there, some time for the defensive backs to make a play on it on, your thro on his throws. He's going to drop back to pass. There's a throw, and that is well high. There is a flag on the play. Saw Aiden Cole there wide open. He was calling for the ball. Porcelato elects to throw the swing pass, and that does not work. We'll see what the flag is. But as it looks right now, Looks like it's going to be on the... Yeah, it looks like it's on Lourdes. And it will be on Lourdes. It does get declined. And the punt unit will come out for Lourdes. So St. James off to an early lead. They will get the ball back. And they can really start to ice this game because 14 points six minutes in we saw this last game pretty much quick 14 point lead BM really never recovered that is a very high kick not too deep though there will not be no yards it will be a pretty nice return still trying to make some people miss over the 30 yard line and he's down there Jose Martorina on the Martarina there with the return, and that's a decent return. They will start on the 30, and this is not looking great for Lourdes. No, no, not at all. So let's see if they change up their coverage on Bert, or, uh, Bertolo because that's pretty key if they're going to try to stop the St. James offense. We haven't really seen anyone else do that much damage. But last year, they had so many tools on this offense. Jacob Thomas also can take off. Now, you say he can take off. He's going to take off. Look at that burst of speed. That might be a house call down to the five. Dives for the it, pylon touchdown. Jacob, you just said he could take off. And Jacob Thomas will go from the 35 to the house. <laughs> yeah, I told you he could take off. We saw that last year when their run game was not going. And what a great finish to that play. Dives for the pylon, gets it, and that is 21 nothing. And you can pretty much book this one already. I believe that was a 30-yard run. I may have said 35, but Thomas, 
that was a collapse pocket. He just took off and a burst of speed in the middle of the field, cut him to the outside. No one can touch him. People coming to this game late have missed a lot already. Only 10 minutes in, but it is 20, now 21, nothing. The Lions over the Crusaders. Yeah, people that are coming in now might think something's wrong with the scoreboard. Hey, why do these guys have 21 only six minutes into the game? Nope, that's just how St. Uh, St. James's offense has been early on. And St. James operated like this last year. They'd go take a shot, and uh, <laughs> usually on their first play. And uh, it usually worked out for them. Mm -hmm. And here we saw big first shot, touchdown first play, and... Lewis just really hasn't done anything to stop them. Yeah, this passing offense has been fantastic. And so if you have a quarterback that can take off as well, I mean, it's really tough for them to stop what St. James is doing. Yeah, that time they had Bert Nick Portole covered completely, and you saw Thomas looking that way. So Mamaliti's going to take this handoff and try to get to the left side of the field. He'll be tackled there on that far hash maybe picking up one at the very most. Now Lourdes is going to have to probably pass down the field. That was Alex Mail who got there first. But yeah, Lourdes needs something, and they need it quick. Because we know in these D10 games, it's so hard to come back from a 21 to nothing yeah, that's deficit. I haven't seen any comebacks like that recently. So here's Porcelato in the split backfield, looking for time, now rolling to his left, throwing well out of bounds. That will bring up third. And there was a bit of pressure there. Porcelato took a hit at the end of that play, but it will result in a punt after the incomplete pass. And really nothing to show for on that drive, only picking up one yard. Yeah, that's that's not usually how you want to end a drive. A two and out, only picking up one yard is not fantastic. Not good signs here from this offense. That is a very high kick that'll bounce near the 50-yard line. If St. James gets this, it will be no yards. They do jump on it. So that should move him up and put him in some good starting field position for their fourth drive, three drives, three touchdowns. Yeah, this Lourdes, our defense has really done nothing to stop them. I'm pretty sure they've only ran about seven plays max, and they already have three touchdowns. Yeah, it's it's not been a good showing here for Lourdes early on. Now let's see if they can get a stop here. Haven't been able to figure out this offense yet and even push them back for negative yards. No, haven't seen any of that. Now they will run the ball here, and there is a big gap. Look at that room as he picks up the first down. That'll be Ben Cotterell on the carry. Damn, this run game looks pretty good. We weren't sure how they would do without uh, Tanner Nelms because we have not seen them here yet on Friday Night Lights, but it looks to be off to a great start. Yeah, good little run. Pick it up 10. So just past the four-minute mark now. And already 21 nothing Lions. Thomas has a split backfield once again. It will be a bobbled snap. Now another run. It's Cotterell. And that is another good run on first down. Maybe just short of that first down yard mark. I think a yard short they're going to mark him of that first down mark. And it looks like the kicking unit will come out now. Or it might just be a change of personnel. Not 100% sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, second down, my bad. I thought it was third. So on second and one, probably just go to the ground here. Yeah, I always like the QB sneak in these situations. Pretty much a guaranteed first down. Yeah, and seeing what they're doing. I believe they did a lot of this last year as well. Where they and they'd also send the uh, 
There's a receiver on the far That's right. A bobbled snap, though. Thomas is going to run to the right, and he has so much room. A broken play turns into a touchdown. Jacob Thomas finds his way into the end zone, his second rushing touchdown. And, <laughs> wow. A bobbled snap. Thomas picks it up and just burns everyone to the outside. Yeah, I, I haven't seen anything go Lourdes' way right now. I mean, even a play that should be positive for them turns into a touchdown. And that's a 20-plus yard run on the scamper there from Thomas. And right now it is 27 nothing. Pending the extra point. Have we ever seen the clock be run in the first quarter? I don't think we have, but we might we, just see we that. We might see that as that PAT is up and through. 28 to zip. Have we ever seen the backups in in the second half? I think that's the real question. Yeah, I, this is a very lopsided score early in this game. So can Lourdes do anything to really get back in this game? Score. And That's how, the obvious answer. How would they do that? Because they have well, really got nothing going. They got to go downfield. We've seen, we saw them last week. They went downfield a couple of times and that was their one successful drive where they scored a touchdown. They haven't even attempted it here. And they have a fullback in. It's Looks like an offensive off lineman. To Mamaliti picking up with that progress, maybe three or four. Looks like they're dropping one of their defensive linemen in at fullback to lead block for Mamaliti there. Yeah, because they're without Barber, who usually does that. So we're just approaching the two-minute mark here of this first quarter. And, yeah, you, got, you guys see the score. So St. James here. Everything's really looked good. Do they even keep running up the score? Ye yes. I, I say you got to keep putting uh, the pedal to the metal. You never know. It is still the first quarter. It's still early. That's a ball that falls incomplete. Pressure was coming. I believe he's thrown on his back foot. I say you got to keep going. But eventually... You hold back near the end of the game, maybe third quarter-ish, put in your backups. We're going to have a third and six here. Looks like the punting unit will come out for Lourdes. And another two and out here. So it'll be third and six. Okay. Number ten. There's a low punt. It'll be picked up. Sorry, it won't be picked up. It'll be bobbled now. Here comes a return on that far side. Looks like he could break it for a decent amount of yardage. Getting over the 50-yard line close to midfield. And that was Matarina on that return. So it'll be first and ten here. Just around a minute remaining in the first quarter. 28 zip as there's a pitch out to the right. Quite a bit of room to break this as he will get close to the 35-yard line. That was Cottrell on the pitch. Cottrell has done a nice job here on his couple of runs. We haven't seen him much, but when we do, he does bring out some big runs. So they'll give him the 37-yard line. And this was pretty much their identity last year. They'd run the ball and then catch people off guard. When they think they'd run, they'd throw it over the top. Yes, and they're doing the opposite now. They're throwing over the top, and now people are expecting them to pass, and they're just running the ball and picking up yardage. That's another pitch. They're actually going to flip it back to Bertolo. And he's going to try to pick up a few yards, trying to spin off that. And there's going to be a 
flag down. Yeah, it looks like there's a St. James player with his helmet off there. I believe that's Dante Sirio. Yeah, let's let's see what that is. I'm and I was on the is tail against of the play. Lourdes. And that will move the chains. The refs are still talking here. So we got 15 seconds left here. That'll move them up around 17 yards. So this should be the last play here. It'll be Thomas rolling to his right, now lofting one to the back of the end zone. That'll be caught. That's Ethan Barry, and what a way to close out the first quarter. Thought Thomas there coming off the bootleg had Bartolo open, but he lets it to go to Ethan Barry. Makes a tough catch, and these receivers have made a couple of tough catches today. And now I believe that pushes it in to run time pending the extra point. Yeah, I mean, St. James pending the extra point here, dropping a 35 bomb on this Lourdes defense in one quarter. I mean, that's that's tough to They're see. On pace to score 140 points in this game. So yeah, that is a that is the way to start a game up 35. And this has just been a rough one. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not sure if anything has gone Lourdes' way at this point. Like he, The bobbled snap is the only thing, and that resulted in a touchdown. Yeah, a St. James touchdown and a 20-plus yard run at that where he just beat everyone on the field. So they're going to have to turn something or ch change something to even make the scoreline slightly respectable. One big play they need. Just to maybe get give some... A, give them some hope. Because right now I can tell you they have none. No, yeah, this does not look like a huddle that is confident that they're going to put up points. And St. James, they're playing like as if they had the same team last year because that team last year would blow out teams. And this team right now is just running over Lourdes. See what Lourdes can do. Mamaliti in the backfield. He's definitely the best offensive player, I'd have to say, on this team from what yeah. we saw last week. I haven't seen any, any other standouts as that run is just swallowed up, losing two or three on the play. And now it will be a second and 12, most likely a passing down here. So, yeah, St. James has a few players returning that's on their D-line, their defensive line really jumped on that run. And if they can keep stopping the run, Lourdes, their offense hasn't been quite successful, but it would shut it down even more. And there is a player down for the Lions. So that's Ryan Sultana that will come off the field after being shaken up. And we will have a second and 12 upcoming for the Crusader offense. And they haven't really put anything in the air right now. It's, I think it's only been two swing passes so far. Nothing downfield. And they only have two receivers lined up right now.
Dropping back now, Porcelato. He'll roll to his right. Looks like he's just going to keep nice stiff arm there. There will be a flag as he is wrapped up just short of the 40-yard line. And it's against Lewards. I believe it was on the stiff arm, I want to say. On a face mask, possibly. So we'll see the result of that flag. Either way, it should be bringing up a Lourdes punt. And it is against Lourdes. So yeah, even after picking up. That was a positive gain there from Porcelato. Even that's going to come back. And I believe they're bringing it back 15. And it should be third as well. Actually, it, should, it might stay second down. Yeah, push him back, repeat second. A lot of confusion here. Ref still yeah. talking with the Pretty players. Delay. All right, they finally make the uh, the call, and we should spot the ball anytime soon. And they're going to get another flag, I think. Objectional conduct that's on Lourdes, and that's going to push them back even further, and it is still second down. It's probably not what you like to see. And this could be a situation where you have to take a safety. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're probably going to have to. <laughs> There's, unless you pick up enough to trust your kicker just on a, third. Even just a flip field. And it looks like we have a timeout from Lourdes. So a lengthy amount of time here between snaps. I'm not too sure. Maybe just wants, the coach wants to talk to the quarterback. Make yeah. sure the boys are calmed down. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I'm not sure why you're taking a time out here. Maybe you're trying to uh, game plan picking up this second and 35, 37. Running up something crazy. Yeah, this is a long distance. Yeah. I second down. I don't think all game Lewis has picked up, or all uh, all week last week, they picked up anything around 30 yards. I think their biggest gains have been about 10, 12 yards on the ground. They did have one throw last week that I believe went for around 27, I want to say. That's probably their biggest If my play. memory was right. So that would be still, I think it would just about make it back to the line of scrimmage. And the refs seem to still be talking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. This is a very lengthy delay. <laughs> it will finally come up to the line on second and 37. <laughs> and they're going to go down the field. That'll be incomplete. Oh, <laughs> There's, There's going to be a flag right. on that. That is a pretty big hit. Alan Cool, the intended receiver. I mean, it's second and like 37. I no don't need see to do the that need to absolutely blow up the receiver. <laughs> that was a late hit too. Came oh, yeah. in. Yeah, it was it was late for sure. It's a fast game though. It, it is a fast game, but that I was a, that was, was a tad late. Yeah, that was Alan Cool that got <laughs> a run taken at him. We'll see the result of the penalty. I mean. 
maybe maybe that will pick up the first down if it's a uh, personal foul. <laughs> so we'll have a timeout from St. James now. And let's see how much these sticks move up. I believe it will still be second in distance. No, I think it'll be an automatic first, though. And it looks like it will be an automatic first. Lourdes picking it up on second and 37. That's what you like to see. Not the exact way that he might th uh, might have thought they'd pick it up, but they did. it'll be off a penalty. Yep, so they're going to pick up that first down. There's Porcelato dropping back. Oh, that could have been picked off. I don't know what yellow shirt was in the area other than the black shirts, but that was not a great throw. And Jeff, that was very close to, to being picked off. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping that was to the ground because, yeah, there was nobody in the area there. We got second and ten upcoming here after the incompletion. Another long-distance situation for Lourdes. I mean, they picked it up on second and 37, so let's see if they can do anything on second and 10. That'll be a bobbled snap, and he's just going to have to eat that, and that will result in a third and a long. We will see the punt unit, I assume, coming out here. Gabe Valdis with the sack there on the bobbled snap, and at least they're not punting from their end zone. Yeah, because that would be probably, they'd probably take the safety. Gabe Valdis was the backup running back last year to Tanner Nelms. He's out there playing on the line this year. And picked up a sack there. So now let's see if Lourdes can somewhat flip field here as they are kind of pinned back. They will attempt the punt that is very high and pretty poor as it'll be picked up at the 40. That's Charbonneau looking to evade some tackles and he will get over the 35-yard line, and that is some pretty nice field position for St. James to start off with to put up their sixth score of the day, probably, seeing that they haven't stalled out yet once. Yeah, I think they finished every possession with a touchdown. So, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't expect anything less here. Yeah, we'll see what happens as they're up 35 nothing. That drive did take quite a bit off the clock seeing that they might not be able to uh, put up that same 35 number for this quarter as well. Also I believe the clock is running. This will be a running play and there is a lot of room for Cotterell as Almost he will get over the through. 20. A lot of tacklers were in on that one. Almost broke through but does get brought down. Will be a first down. And they will start this first down at the 18-yard line. <laughs> Approaching the nine-minute mark here. Lourdes on defense. I mean, if they commit to the run, they could hit him over the top. If they, if they cover um, the pass, they could get gashed in the running game, as we've seen early. Do they have anything that they could do right now? Honestly, don't really know. Yeah, I mean, there's another good run. As the that's passing pick game has just torched your defense. Yeah, it's not really been fair. And then the running game is picking up consistent first downs on every single run. And even when you bobble a snap, oh, the bobbled snap happens, they took it to the house. Yeah, and even looking at these two teams, like you see St. James just looks a lot bigger. I mean... Yeah, when I was watching warm-ups, St. James looked pretty big that... They were just massive compared to this Lourdes team. And, you know, that's not everything, but in football, it is something. We have a player down here.
So that was Rafilo Cortes that was shaken up there. We he will make his way off the field, and St. James will resume their drive. First down here on the five-yard line. There is another run, and that's not really a concern as that's Ben Cotterell making his way into the end zone practically untouched. Don't think he did get touched there on that run. Great job blocking from the O-line, and that will make it 41 to nothing. Yeah, this is... Um, we've had two games here on... Friday Night Lights today that have been a little bit lopsided. This one is still going, but, I mean, 41 to zip. That is, that's tough to see. No matter what team you're a fan of, as that kick there looks to be flag here up on and the extra good. Point. So it's 42 zip now. We will see what the flag is. I might take it back and make him redo that PAT. No, I don't think it will. Looks like it's on Lourdes. So I imagine the score will go to 42 to nothing. After that PAT was good, there is a flag. Yeah, there's still some confusion going on with the referees in Lourdes. Not too sure what the problem is here. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on right now. But it looks like the ball will start on the... On the five? I'm thinking the... Or will the kicking unit come back out? I think the kicking unit yeah. will come back out. So that should... Yeah, maybe they're just redoing it from the same spot. I'm not sure what's really going on. as we're not even at the eight minute mark here of the second quarter. And it is 41 to nothing pending the extra point. And same result this time, it is good. 42 nothing, Lions over the Crusaders. Yeah, this is a pretty much a done deal. I mean, if you didn't expect that earlier, we s we're saying, like, the first play with GC, where they return that squib kick, the first play to Bortolo, deep. Yeah, I mean, if you score a touchdown on the first play, watch out. <laughs> you're most likely going to have a good day. Yeah, you're dropping a 30 or a 40 piece here as this is 42 right now. Last game was 48. So the Lions are looking to break that in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're too worried about that. Uh, it's only one more score. Should do it. I'm going to ask you this question. What do you think Lourdes wants to do in this game? Maybe just execute a decent play? Like, Cause I only ask you that because I'm trying to think to myself, and I'm like, how do you keep going out there and competing. Oh yeah, it's probably it's it's tough to do that. I mean I'm I'm not sure if the Lords coaches are just thinking to hopefully execute something correctly because I don't think they've really had any plays where you look back and uh, yeah that turned out fairly well. If I'm their coach I'm saying let's go make history. Let's come back from forty two points. They will pick up a first down here. Yeah, that's Porcelato. On the sneak with two yards out on yeah. second down. Yeah, I mean, but if you're you're the coach saying, let's go make history and come back from this, it's tough for your team to buy in, right, seeing what's been going on. They've got to know at this point. It's highly improbable, but you might as well keep going out there. Yeah, you got to give your players some confidence, even if you don't believe it yourself. And that'll be Hosford. This could be a decent gain oh, as when he, he gets is blown cranked up. at the end of that play. That is Jean Charbonneau. Charbonneau just came in. That's his second big hit. This time he didn't get flagged for it. And he is loving it. But still a decent gain from Lourdes. Lourdes 
is quietly putting up a nice little drive here. Hopefully can finish it off with a score because that's what they need right now. Yeah, just something here. Maybe even points. Like you just want to see points. A field goal, maybe a rouge, just something. Just remove that goose egg. And, and that is a snap. bubbled snap, and that will be recovered by the St. James defense. That was Ruben Bronco, or sorry, Branco, picking that ball up. And uh, as we just said, that drive is not doing too bad. It kind of stalled out with a bobbled snap. Yeah, bobbled snap. Ball gets loose. Lions pick it up. Yeah, that's not the same result as St. Yeah. James had on their bobbled snap, where they took it to the house. Instead, they'll turn this ball over near midfield. Looks like the first team offense will stroll out once again. 42 nothing is the score. So it's a split backfield for Thomas. High snap. It'll be a run, and that's a pretty good stop there for Lourdes. But it will result in, I believe, three yards. Yeah, that was Dakota Caldwell. He was, in, he was getting blocked there, but reached out with an arm to make that tackle. Nice play by him. Probably their best play defensively so far. So now it will be second and seven. High snap, same result as a run. That's Caldwell nearly getting him on the edge, but that run will pick up a first down. Another fantastic run there from Cotterell. Picks up around 15. Yeah, we'll give him 15 there. Yeah, that's uh, first down picked up from St. James, and they are just really running this clock out at this point because we haven't seen him go to the air since I believe their fifth score. And I highly doubt we will. No, no point. I mean, you might see Thomas coming out of the game sooner rather than later. They do not have a backup quarterback on here. I believe Ethan Barry played a bit at quarterback last year when they did have these games yeah, blown out. Step in, as that's another first down. This running game is just torching Lourdes. And we said the size difference. That's got to be that offensive line just bigger than that defensive line and just pushing them around. The thing is, Lourdes has some big offensive linemen. I know it's hard to see from up here, but it seems like they do match up pretty well defensive line, offensive line. Yeah, so... But obviously we can see that Lourdes linebackers aren't the biggest. Yeah, I mean, I think other than Porcelato, who is pretty tall, he's playing quarterback as well. They're kind of small at linebacker. Their defensive backs looks pretty small, as that is another run to a different running back, and same result, a pretty good pickup. That's Owen Ellis on the ground. Owen Ellis now on the ground. I believe that's a first as well. Yeah, that's another first. Yeah, 17-yard gain there by Ellis. Seems like they're putting every running back possible in. They're picking up 10 yards per carry like it's nothing. Yeah, this O-line was so good last year. We got a, Tanner Nelms was a beast last year, but yeah. this O-line definitely helped him out a bit. Yeah, we talked about Nelms so much, but this offensive line has done wonders for this football program. So it's first and 10. We will see Thomas roll to his right, looking to the air. That'll be caught, I believe, bobbled and caught. That's Nick Bertolo. That's another touchdown. And that's his third of the game. Yeah, and he's showing that ball off. And that's Jacob Thomas's fourth touchdown pass, sixth total touchdown. Yeah, he is having himself a day as they're going to try to put this through to make it 49 to nothing. So they will surpass GC if they hit this uh, PAT. And that will sail right through. So St. James is just really enforcing this, that they are the better team at this point. 49 to zip. 
definitely dropped off a bit in pace from that first quarter, but that was because Lourdes has had more sustainable drives, but they haven't been too sustainable. Yeah, as you s like the last drive was looking fairly positive until that snap happened. That was bobbled by Porcelato and put on the ground. So they do have that positive that they did put together a few first downs. So we have Porcelato taking this once again. He's just going to dash to his left and throw a ball that it looked to be tipped. That was Nelson Seglo, whose his intended receiver was. Closing in on the end of this first half. Two minutes and 17 seconds to go. It will be second and 10. Dropping back to pass once again. That's a decent ball, but it is absolutely jumped on by the St. James defense. It'll be picked off, and it'll be oh, lateral back it. to Valdis. That was Evan Mail on the pick. And on the pitch, it was Valdis. So, yeah, Porcelato, that was the first ball that looked pretty good coming out of his hand, but it just hung up there for way too long. And now the Lions will take over with two minutes to go in the first half. Yep, first half, 49 zip. I mean, like, even on picks, they're pitching the ball back. Like, this St. James is looking absolutely in their element right now. And false it looks start. like that's yeah. a free play. Well, actually, offside, my bad. Yeah, I was about to say, it looked like Lourdes jumped there. I'm not sure why they couldn't run that free play, unless it was a false start. Maybe the guard did move. It is offside. Yeah, it is offside against Lourdes. Not sure why they didn't get the free play, but they probably didn't need it, as it'll be first and five. Let's see what Thomas can do, who is still in the game. They might just get him through this half as we are still approaching the two-minute mark. 2.02 2 on the game clock. That'll be Cotterell, and that is another very good run from Cotterell, and he might take it. No, he will be stopped just short of the five-yard line. Leave another fantastic around run. the six. It's around 35 yards that he just picked up on the ground. I believe it's 30 yards you picked up on that one. So they are now on the six yard line. So yeah, they could make this 56 with a score and a PAT here. And that would make that an 112 point possibility if they keep this pace. If they do score here. There is another run. Looks like Lourdes has that stop. He did pick up a round three, I believe. Maybe more. And it will be more. Two and a half. Two and a half away. But he did pick up about three and a half there. got some <laughs> Seder Nation chance from the Lourdes faithful. Maybe hoping for a little bit of a comeback as it's 49 zip. And, and that is another it. stop. And so good on the Lourdes defense there. Is the kicking team going to come out? And it looks oh, like it looks they like will. It is. Still would be 
a 104 possibility if they keep this pace pending this field goal. Yep, we'll see. And uh, now I'm, s yeah, no, they are going to try to put this through. On the left hash here, it'll be only an 11 yarder. And that's good. And yes, sir. Easy money there. It'll be 52 to zip. So this is uh, turn into a little bit of the route. I mean, hopefully we could see maybe a clock run soon because Lourdes really yeah, has they, no chance. They just keep coming out here on their offensive possessions and it just keeps getting worse for them. After halftime, don't go anywhere because we will have the potato sack race. Yeah, always might entertaining. Might be the most competitive thing that has happened here on this Friday Night Lights as these two games watch some high have scores. Been far from competitive. Jump in a potato sack to win a ten dollar McDonald's gift card. By the way, Friday Night Lights is sponsored by McDonald's. Yep, they are very competitive for that McDonald's gift card. Pass is dropped here. That was intended for Hosford. Second down upcoming. Second down. And another incompletion. <laughs> could, could see St. James getting this ball back before the first half is over. <laughs> and nothing <laughs> really to show f here on this drive. But yep. they will try another run. There's a run. That'll pick up positive yardage, maybe five. And why not go for it here on third? Might as well. Honestly, the punting unit hasn't been fantastic, even though they have been out there a lot, so they've had time to get in rhythm. And it looks like they are going to go for it. I mean, you might as well. Third and five coming up. That'll be a delayed handoff, and it goes absolutely nowhere. That's Gabe Valdis eating that one up, and he's had a pretty good game to start off. Yeah, Valdis, he has a sack. He has a few tackles for losses. He's been pretty good so far. He also had somewhat of an interception return on the pitch. Yep, picked up a few yards there. So 34 seconds here for St. James to put even more points up. I think they're just going to kneel this ball. And that's what we like to see as it'll run it down to zero. I believe they'll have to have one more. Maybe a fake nail bomb to the end zone. You never know. You never know. Something crazy like that. Just, you know, just be barely away from putting the knee down. And just, you know, nice little lob to the end zone. But I believe you need one more play to get it to halftime. And that will finish off the half. We will have a short break, then we will show you the potato fun sack race. Fun fact, that is also the first Lions possession that hasn't resulted in a score. Hey, look at that. And now we'll see a potato sack race. Uh, the last race we had a clear winner and an injury, so that was uh, quite eventful. This yeah. time I believe we have a guy with a backpack on. Could be That's wrong. Crazy. 
You also have a guy with the OVO sweater. You got to represent Drake here. And he doesn't oh, even have the sack. Some pop. people didn't even have the sack pulled up. He doesn't even have. Look at him bolt. He doesn't even have that left foot in, but he is loving his time in the spotlight. He will not get the gift I'm, card. I'm not even sure if that should count. Yeah, we have a hat and down there. And we have a push-up. This is just straight disrespect to all the other competitors. And a guy with a backpack definitely weighing him down when he comes in fifth. Yeah, put that backpack away. I don't care what you have in there. You're going all And in. the guy with the one leg wants that dub, and he just gets attacked. Yo, that oh, and there is assault out here on this field. I believe there should be a suspension or two from that. Suspend him from the potato sack race. That's just Oh, and there's a fight out oh, here. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. It doesn't get better than this. Now he's picking. There's a pick up there. We should be all good. Now it was quite an eventful potato sack race. We had a cheater. We had a few scraps. But in the end, someone's coming away with the $10. Don't Donald's forget about card. the kid with the backpack. Yep, kid had a backpack on. We will be back for the second half of this absolute route here on Friday Night Lights. Every down, pass, rush, and kick brings us closer together. This is how we play. Here is why we play. It takes a team to play football. And it takes Football Canada to help keep amateur players in the game. From playgrounds to stadiums. Exceptional student athletes are born. Where records are broken. Where great plays are made. Where school colors ignite passion. Where champions prevail. Where tradition is celebrated. Ontario University Athletics.
Hi, I'm Mac. And I'm Justin. And we are strength conditioning coaches with the Griffin Performance Academy. And this is your performance tip of the day. So when discussing core training, we can think of two different things. The core can either resist or prevent motion, or it can be helpful in terms of creating motion and transferring force. So in this movement, Mac's gonna do a med ball side toss. From here, Mac's gonna transfer the load from his lower body through his core into his arms. He's using that rotational component to train the core and develop power through his entire body. We can train the core to resist motion. Here, Mac is doing a anti-rotation pal-off hold from a half kneeling position. The band is trying to pull him in a rotational pattern while he tries to resist. So he's creating as much tension as he can through his torso in order to prevent that motion. There is a place, just an hour from Canada's largest city, where culture and the arts are thriving, where environmental issues are not just an afterthought, but an integrated part of the community, where tradition has evolved into part of the fabric of daily life to inform and inspire new ways of thinking of and being in the world. This place is Guelph, Ontario, and within it lies a university like no other. A university dedicated to preserving and enhancing the essentials of life, whose ways of fostering education and research in human and animal health, the environment, food, communities, commerce and culture have earned it the highest rankings among Canadian universities and, most importantly, Yeah, let's see how they come out this half. You never know, maybe they could uh, drop a quick 52 bomb and um, get back in this game. Probably. Yeah, probably not likely. too likely, but no, it's probably not you never happen. know, and there will be a whistle here. I think they will redo that kick. Right now, the Lions on pace to put up 104 points after that great first half yeah. where they dropped 52. I mean, I don't think they will because at this point, they're not trying to put up points. But even when they're not trying to put up points, they're just running the ball. They've been picking up 10 yards a carry, and it's been, it's been tough for this Lourdes team to stop anything that they're doing. So a lot of onside kicks from this Lions team last year. Most likely won't see that here. Yeah, we'll bring that point up, but I don't think they're going to onside kick. As that ball will stop dead, it'll be picked up by Hosford. And hold on, nope, he is tripped back up. I thought he had some room on that far side. So 
So it looks like we are in a run time here for the second half. Awesome. We're wondering if we could get into run time for the uh, first half. Didn't but do that. I don't think it's possible. No, I don't think you can. They did have the amount of points to create run time. Yeah. But, yeah, it just it's the first half. They're not going to do that. But you never know. Maybe Lourdes will uh, shrink that cushion to the point where they won't use run time. There's oh, that could have been blown up. <laughs> yeah, there's a chance for that to be run, blown up, like you said. But Mamaliti will pick up a decent gain there out to the 40, probably around 6 or 7. I believe he picked up 6. Six and a half. Good little six and a half pickup. Ooh, they actually moved the spotting back a bit, so it's going to be four. No, six, six. Now six. They have to take that half yard away from Lourdes? They didn't have to, but they did. <laughs> they, they did not want them having anything easy to pick up this first as they march out here on second and four. There is another run, Lucas Mamaliti. He, he will pick up a first down. That's a good little run for Mamaliti. Nice job. Good start to this half. Pick up a first down. So we got a first and ten. They've got some decent field position now. Last time they're around here, they had that bobbled snap where they turned the ball over. So we'll see some subs here for St. James. Not sure they passed midfield. Not too sure. Don't don't believe they have. Yeah, I believe the only pass they went downfield on was that pick. I think bad B, right? Still don't think they passed midfield on that. And that's a handoff to the fullback. So yeah, that's Alex Bastiano. Picks up maybe a yard, maybe not. Yeah, um, just maybe a few chain links. Maybe a uh, couple blades of grass. Yeah. Will be second and around 10. So most likely a passing down. But yeah. we have seen them run in this situation before. Yeah, we've seen them pass too, and it's not gone great. Depends. It looks like they will have quite a few lined up out wide. And that's a low snap. They will pass to the sideline, and, and that will overthrown. be over on the track. They'll bring up third down. One piece Lourdes is definitely missing was Porcelato's favorite target, DeCorso, last year. He was electric as a receiver, and that's really just stalled this passing game. We haven't seen it the same. Last year was a decent passing offense without DeCorso there. Yeah, DeCorso's been fantastic. Tough. I mean, he'd make contested catches. He'd run after the catch, pick up some good yards, make people miss. And he could, he could push the ball downfield. Yeah, he played defense as well, I believe. I and believe he was in at cornerback. Yeah, so he was making plays all over the ball. Now they just don't have anyone to spark offense, really. And I mean, Mamaliti could do something, but he's just on the ground picking up a few yards each carry. And, and that, that was on top picked. of having Mamaliti. So, and Porcelato looked like a much better quarterback with the Corso there. So it'll be a turnover on downs there, as that was third and ten that they threw that incompletion on. Let's see if there's any change in personnel. I would not be shocked here if there was. I do see number 10, the receiver, Colin Gordon. We have not seen him today. Looks like we do have a new quarterback in. That is Caden Henry. And that'll be a run, and that is stopped dead in its and tracks. And I believe that is the first negative play. Owen Ellis run there. That was Ruben Downey stopping that in the backfield. As that will be a loss of three, second and 13. 
So it looks like the second team is out there. We don't see no Nick Bortolo, who's had a huge game. Also, Ethan Berry looks to be out of the game as well. Yeah, I don't believe Ben Cotterell is either, as he's been their tailback as well. And it looks like they'll throw here. That'll fall incomplete. So now it'll be third. It looks like St. James will come out here to punt. And this will be the first punt Lourdes has caused. I mean, they did have that turnover on downs when St. James <laughs> need the clock out. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't really call that a turnover on downs. They might pride themselves on that stop. Maybe they did because ever since that stop, yeah, they, they St. Been James has not scored. <laughs> Looking at the positives here for Lourdes as that punt will go to the and far it's side. It is muffed. It is nearly recovered by St. James. And I think they have I it. I think they might have it. Uh, no, no, a Lourdes player, I believe. No, I it. believe a Lourdes player is down. Oh, well, I, I didn't see. I don't know the same. I think they have the, the ball. Yeah, so we have a Lourdes player shaken up. We'll just take a quick break for that.
and it's St. James Ball. One more back here. Um, injury time out there. Yeah, that's Pickle Jacob Hosford. He something is wrong with his leg. I mean, they got him off the field, but that looks really tough for Lourdes there. And the result of that last play was a fumble. And it will be St. James Ball. So yeah, I believe he was returning the kick. and He muffed it. And then I believe something happened right after that with a hit on him. He went down. Doesn't look like he'll return this game. No, probably not. Again, score is 52 to nothing, Lions. If you just are joining us. Yep, if you're just joining us, um, quick recap of what's been going on. It's just been all St. James. I mean, Jacob Thomas had an unreal night. Bertolo has three touchdowns, uh, three receiving touchdowns. Thomas has six, four, four in the air, two in the ground. And, yeah, the Lourdes offense hasn't really done much. And I have no idea what's hap happening. Yeah, I mean, is it St. James Ball? Still pretty unsure of what's happening. Yeah, lots of confusion going on. I believe m more so right now at the point of this, what this ball game's at, m the concerns just on Jacob Hosford because his leg does not look like it's in good shape. Still a lot of confusion. Looks like St. James will be making their way back out now. I believe. Yeah, they're coming back out here. So I guess the show must go on here as we are still camped before this five minute mark. And the first snap prior to the, or after that injury will be a running play, and that will be a St. James touchdown. And that will be Owen Ellis in the end zone. So Owen Ellis will pick up yet another touchdown for the St. James Lions. And hide your kids here because this is a massacre. Yeah, honestly. There, there might be some children in the crowd. You might want to take them home because what we're seeing – is not safe for the younger audiences. It is fifty-eight to nothing. Yeah, this is this is bad. Yeah, it, it is. It really is. We'll see if the PAT can go through. Cameron Ross on the PAT attempt. He's been pretty good there, as that's another no doubter as it is good 59 to zip and now this Lourdes offense losing one of their better playmakers yeah I mean there's not much real talent on this offense. Hosford could make a few people miss in open field if he wanted to. Otherwise, yeah, they they don't have much anymore here. It's like most of this first team defense. Never mind, sorry. It looks like most of the backups will be in here. There is a running play. It's Lucas Mamalidi and he is wrapped up. So that's Jack Delaney, or sorry, Jack Delaney with that tackle. It'll be second and eight upcoming here for Lourdes. Lourdes really has just pride to play for at this point. Yeah, it's, it's not much at this point, honestly. You just want to see him maybe get a score. Just have a drive that goes over midfield. 
There's a throw. Porcelato will be tipped and incomplete. And that will bring up a third down. They might go for it. I'm not sure. They've gone for it on every other third down after, I believe, the 42-point mark. It looks like the offense will stay out there. And St. James's defense will stay out there. They do bring out an extra safety, I believe, on this play. Yep, they do bring out a defensive lineman. Obviously expecting pass here. Yep, third and eight. They haven't really been able to go over the top at all. And here's Porcelato, low snap. Picked up. He will unload to the near side. has got a man. That is caught. And that is a big play. Josh Romero with the catch. Hold on. There's multiple flags. Beat his man, Ty Cathcart, there. Oh, uh, I don't believe it. I think it might be against Lourdes. But yeah, Ty Ka Cathcart gets beat there. Safety didn't really help too much. Well, but either way, a nice play by Josh Romero. Yeah, but there is a flag, and it's coming back. They're bringing it back. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> no harm done. I mean, that was a nice yeah, it nice was a nice play. throw. Yeah, nice throw, nice catch. But um, and especially against these, uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of boos are ringing yeah, out here. Seder but Nation's not loving it. Seder Nation still cheering their team on. Got to give them <laughs> a lot of, a lot of points for still being here. Yeah, I like it. But uh, against the second team defense, you're gonna want to take some shots here if you're Lourdes. I mean, maybe they find somebody again to pick this up. We did see him pick up a second and 37, so. That was due to a penalty. Yeah, well. The punt unit will come on. Let's see if we'll see a fake. Out of context, picking up a second 37 sounds pretty nice. <laughs> it does, but it was due to a penalty, and they didn't even get 37 yards on that penalty. No, they did not. It just <laughs> resulted in a not first down. first, yep. And Lourdes will line up to punt here. I wouldn't mind seeing a fake. Yeah, we saw one today from uh, Bishop Mack when they were down by a lot. They didn't get it, but... No. And we will go with a high the kick. boring option as they'll punt it away. And there is a lane for Charbonneau. He steps out of bounds. There is a flag. And, and he's getting a little physical with some Lourdes players. And... St. James, you don't really have to show anything else right now. I mean, the scoreboard's pretty indicative of what's going on. You don't have to really go after Lourdes like that. Yeah. <laughs> couple of flags, though. Yeah, and that also flags. is the end of the third quarter for you viewers still around. Yep. Good on you guys. This crowd is still out and about here tonight. So we'll see after the penalty, the ball will be placed at the 49. Sater Nation still screaming, making some noise out here. Gotta love Sater Nation. That's that's just straight dedication. And that kind of did a rhyme. <laughs> Didn't, wasn't trying that. Just came out that way. So St. James will have the ball here once again. And we'll see. Maybe Lourdes can force another stop like the last uh, possession there for St. James. So, yeah, starting at the uh, Lourdes 49. And... Now a drop back here, St. James. Well, that's a throw down field, falls incomplete. Henry was intending that to Riley McLennan, or McClellan, sorry, and that falls incomplete. I haven't seen down. much of Henry, but uh, we saw him. His first decent throw downfield was incomplete, but that was a back foot throw. He launched 20 yards down the field, so pretty impressed by his arm. Will be second and 10 upcoming. See if Lourdes can try to force a stop. Maybe get some Seder Nation chance going in the crowd. 
Seder Nation definitely been the louder crowd out here. Yeah, other than a uh, few of the St. James touchdowns. Yeah. Parents but have calmed it down for St. James, though. Not yeah. clapping after each touchdown. Got to respect, respect the uh, sportsmanship, and there is a flag there. Yep. Maybe a free play as rolling to his right is Henry. He will throw, and it hit. I believe it hit Carson Taylor right in the numbers incomplete. We'll see what the flag is. Yeah, so it's against Lourdes, and that'll bring up second and five. I believe they just jumped offside. So just when you thought Seder Nation got a must, much needed stop, it will now be second and five after that offsides penalty. Let's see if they can get a stop here on second and five. Henry will take the snap, looking left. There's another flag. He'll roll out to his left this and time. I think Unloads. It'll be caught. I think it's going to come back. Yeah, that's Gabe Valdis on the catch. I believe that was a hold by Bennett, 56, on the offensive line. Henry on the catch. I could be wrong, but I'm almost sure that's who it was on. And let's see what that results in. Yep, so it will be a hold, and that'll bring up second and 15. And now maybe uh, Seder Nation could get a little bit loud because it's a second and long upcoming. It's a potential stop, hopefully, for the Lourdes faithful. They don't seem to be as into it as they were no. at the start of the game or even at the start of the second half. Yeah. But there are still a lot of fans out here. There is Henry unloading. That'll be caught. Still going. And he's going to break that for a first down and more. He as gets He gets blown up by bounds. Nick Peters at the end of that play. <laughs> Nick Peters laying down the hammer on that hit. Nice job there, though. He was on that sideline, toe-tapping, no, escaped no, a tackle. This Lions second-team offense has moved the ball pretty well. Yeah, usually when the second-team offense comes in, their offense slows right down. They, can't they pick up usually first can't pass the ball. Can't pass the ball, and the running game's just slightly below average, but these guys are running all over Lourdes when they can, and you just saw there, they just strung together a second and 15 completion for a first down. That ball was bobbled. Now they're looking to create something out of nothing. What a tackle there by Lucas Mamaliti. That was a handoff to Owen Ellis. And Seder Nation with the reaction here. Some it is second and long. Some people did indeed get on their feet for that. They sat right back down after the announcement, though, as we do hear and some. And the Seder chant coming out <laughs> here. With seven minutes to go, only down 59. It is a winnable game for them. Very winnable. Anything's possible in the sport of football. Here's a run for Ellis. And wow, he's just breaking tackles. Finally down. But now it looks like the field goal unit will come on to push this lead to 60 points. Yeah, that's... We'll see if they can knock that through. Even a Rouge will break the 60 barrier. Actually, don't even think we've seen a rouge on Friday Night Lights yet. Last year, I know for a fact we saw some rouges. Not this year, though. This year, not so far. 
Come on, you got to support the Canadian football. A rouge would be nice, as we might see one here. Come on. No, it will not be a rouge. They bring it out. I don't know about you, but I thought that went through the uprights. <laughs> I, I, was I was looking only at the ref, to be honest, and he, he uh, signaled that he pushed it. But sadly, we will not get to 60 points. And if you're a part of Seder Nation, that's something that will get you a bit hyped. Hey, Maybe the only James bright spot. 59. <laughs> held him to 59. There is still five minutes left, so don't get too excited, excited Seder Nation. Still got some work to do. Next week, we will be back with Friday Night Lights, 4 o'clock game, and then the great 7 o'clock game. Today, we haven't seen the tightest games, but last Friday night, we had a great game between Ross and, I believe it was GCVI, and yeah. that one came down right to the wire. Those low scoring, it was actually very entertaining. Most people were on the edge of their seat for that one because, I mean, we saw the end of that game. GC could have iced it, fumbled on the goal line. And then Ross had that last drive where they tried to pick up some chunk yardage, just couldn't get down the field. So that's a decent pick up there on first. They'll pick up four. No, three, sorry. It'll be second and seven. And that'll be another running play and another time St. James will swallow that running play right up. And then it will be third and I believe four. Let's see if they can pick up this third down. Lourdes had that one big play on third down, but it was called back for a flag. And that'll be a run to Mamaliti. He has some room. He's going to bounce off that tackle. He has got quite a bit of room on the far side. That is a great pickup for Lucas Mamaliti. I believe that was Evan Mail who came in. And made the tackle there, but Mamaliti. <laughs> nice run there. See Sater Nation supporting that run. So they are yet to cross midfield, but it's looking dangerous here for Lourdes as they could get to midfield with only a seven yard pickup. And the three minute warning comes up. And now it's gone. Yeah, we'll get right through that as the clock is still running. And that'll be a fake to the fullback, a pitch outside. Mamalini might be able. No, he will not. I was going to say. Oh, and that ball came midfield. out at the end of the play, and that's Evan Mail again. He's been all over the field since getting out here. Yeah, Mail's been flying on defense. So, yep, second and eight. Only need five to cross midfield. <laughs> and Seder Nation maybe will cross half the halfway point of Hold the field on. for the yes, first time they game, and they do. did it. They did. Seder Nation pick up a good chunk, maybe six yards on the play, and they, they are in Lion territory. And that has been the first time we have said that today. Yeah, that's that's big, as it looks like Seder Nation is not really reacting to it as much as they have previous plays. It'll be third and two, as they still got some work to do after that achievement. And Seder Nation is out here. They're on their feet, a couple of them. One or two, and I think they're making their way up the stairs. That's why they're on their feet. But they're still representing as they're going to pick up this first down with Porcelato. 
See where they spot the ball. Should be a first down. What a play by Porcelato to pick up that first down. And Sater Nation is coming. Coming alive. Only only 58 seconds left, but virtually up. anything can happen. <laughs> anything <laughs> 58 seconds. Happen. All I'm hearing right now is Kevin Garnett after he won his title with the Celtics. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. As it looks like we will have a timeout with Lourdes. They're really drawing something up special here. They're pretty tired. This has been their longest drive today by far. Fifty-one seconds to go on the clock. It is paused for the timeout. Otherwise, it should not be paused. And the Let's Go Satyrs chant is booming through Alumni Field. You can probably pick it up through our mics here. But they are getting pretty excited for the team that just crossed half field for the first time in this game. Only down 59 nothing. 50 seconds left in this ball game. Can they put their first points of this game up on the board? Clock is running too. Don't forget about that. They've only got 50 yards to go if they want a house call. Rolling to his right. That ball is it's tipped in could have been Could have been picked off, but it's not. And if you ask me, that's a sign of light that they could be going house this next play. I think they got one more play here before this game will wrap up. Yeah, I think they have to have a one last play. And you know what? If it's not a knee, I think it's going to be a shot to the house. As Sater Nation is now exiting the building, not staying loyal to the final and whistle. We believe that Sater Nation on its feet here, respecting what their team has done. Here's Porcelato. He's going to sling it. And it's oh, it nearly picked off. And that will be the game. St. James barely pulling it off. 59 zip. Tight game. And our McDonald's player of the game will win a $50 McDonald's gift card. And that will be Jacob Thomas. Six yes, passing sir. touchdowns and also adding two on the ground. He had a great game even though he only played the first half. Uh, the first half. Yeah, imagine if he st stayed in this game, what damage he could have done. But either way, six touchdowns is very impressive. So we will sign out for this second day of Friday Night Lights. We will be back next Friday for another set of game or another set of games. This one closes out with 59 nothing score in favor of St. James. Thank you for tuning in.